Hello my friends, today we're going to be mixing it up a little bit and working on something in a slightly bigger scale than usual. In this video, we're going to be doing some full scale painting work on a replica US World War II M1 helmet to recreate Captain Miller's helmet from Saving Private Ryan. If you've got a replica or a surplus M1 helmet at home, I'm going to show you how to paint it up and create an awesome display piece for your home or office without breaking the bank. If that sounds good to you, let's hop right into it. All right, so here's our replica M1 that we'll be painting today. This is from atthefront.com. It's a very nice recreation of this iconic piece of kit with the corked texture and everything. And you can snag one for about 60 bucks. I'll leave a link down below if you'd like to check one out. Now to help with our painting, I've created a nice little template that you can print out to use and follow along at home. I'll drop a link for that in the description as well. So be sure to download that and print out a copy before we get started. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is cut out our captain's bars. This is the easiest part of the process, so we'll get that done first. Using your hobby knife or a pair of scissors, very carefully go along the outside of the bars and cut those out as cleanly as you can. Once you've got that piece cut out, we can do a quick test fit and line that up in the center front of the helmet. Take your time and make sure you've got it as centered as possible. Be sure to use the included reference images to guide you. Once you're happy with the positioning, we can take a pencil and make a light tracing around the outside of our bars. These don't have to be complete lines, just enough to help you mask off the correct area in just a moment here. Okay, now we're gonna grab our nice thick roll of masking tape that we'll use to create our stencil. Tear off a good piece of tape and press it down onto your cutting mat. Now we're gonna take our captain's bars template and trace that over our masking tape. Once you have a clean tracing, go ahead and carefully cut along your drawing so we can lift out the negative space that we want to paint, which in this case is gonna be the bars themselves. All right, there we go. Now let's gently peel our masking tape off the cutting mat and set that aside. Be sure to keep the masking for the center of our bars as well because we're gonna need that in just a moment. We can start out by placing that small center piece of our bars in the correct spot on our helmet according to the tracing we did earlier. And then we're going to do the same thing with our larger mask. Be sure to line this up as carefully as you can to match your tracing. Once that's on there, go along the inside edges of your mask and push those down really well to make sure we don't have any crinkles or gaps in the bond to the helmet. To prevent overspray, we're going to grab a few more big pieces of tape and mask off the area around our captain's bars. Okay, time to start painting. Using some satin white, I'm going to go ahead and airbrush in our captain's bars by just simply filling in our stencil. If we did all our measuring and placement correctly, then we're going to have ourselves some helmet markings in no time. Alright, once our paint is dry, it's time for the moment of truth. We can slowly peel off our masking tape, and boom! Check that out. We've got ourselves some beautiful, crisp captain's bars. All right, now that we've got a little practice under our belts, let's move on to the trickier part, our second ranger's stencil. First, we can go ahead and cut out along the outside of our template. Once the template is all set, we can line it up on the back side of our helmet as centered as possible. Once again, be sure to use your reference photos to make sure you've got it in the right spot. Once you're happy with the placement, go ahead and trace the outside of your shape just like we did with the bars so we've got a reference to place our stencil later. All right, now the first thing we're gonna mask off here is the big vertical white stripe on the back of the helmet. This marking system was used in the ETO to help identify officers and non-commissioned officers. A vertical stripe is for officers and a horizontal stripe is for non-coms. Captain Miller, of course, gets a vertical bar. So we'll start by masking off the top and bottom of our bar. And then we're going to go ahead and mask off both sides as well, being sure to follow our tracing reference as we go. Be sure to press those masks on there as tightly as you can to ensure a sharp, clean line once we get to painting. Okay, using our same satin white as before, let's go ahead and airbrush in our officer's stripe. And once that paint is dry, we can remove our mask and see how we did. Looking good. All right, next we're gonna just go over and trace the shape of our second ranger's diamond one more time to make sure that's nice and clear. And then we can mask off that diamond with four big pieces of tape. As you go, keep an eye on the top and the bottom of the diamond to make sure your shape stays as symmetrical as possible. Once our diamond is all masked up, we can go ahead and paint up the shape. 
Now at this stage, I realized that the red paint I wanted to use wasn't gonna provide enough coverage to go over our base olive drab and our white stripe evenly. So I went ahead and painted the whole shape white to create an even base that we could then go back and paint our red over all again. Okay, so take two on the red diamond. I'm just using a basic ammo red here, which I found worked pretty well for this purpose. Okay, now for our hardest part. We're gonna take our second ranger's template and very carefully cut out the number two that's right in the middle of our diamond. Next, we'll take a big piece of masking tape and lay it down on our mat. Using our second ranger stencil template with the two removed, we're gonna trace this whole shape on our tape, including the outside border of the diamond and the stripe, as well as the inside of our number two. Once we've done all that tracing, we're gonna remove our paper template. And then we're gonna cut out the number two itself, once again, from the masking tape stencil. All right, beautiful. Now let's take our new number two stencil and line that up inside of our painted red diamond. This is a little fragile piece, so go slow with it and make sure that the number two lays down as flat as possible on the helmet. We're gonna have a little space around the outside of our diamond stencil, so be sure to mask off those extra areas as well. Okay, home stretch here. We're gonna push down our stencil one last time to make sure we've got a solid connection, and then let's airbrush in our number two with some flat black. Drum roll please, let's peel off all our masks and see how everything turned out. All right, beautiful. I'm very happy with how this is coming out. All right, so a few last minute touches. The paint looks a little too fresh for my taste, so I'm just gonna rub our stencils a little bit with my finger to knock off some of the new paint. This will help pull up some of the color on the raised cork texture and help make the helmet look a little bit weathered. It's subtle, but it works pretty well. And now we're just gonna add a little bit of dirt and grime. I'm using my model weathering pigments here to add some random splotches of dirt. No real rhyme or reason to this, just kinda go with what looks good to you. We can add a few different shades of pigment, and then we're just gonna dust off all the excess with a nice, stiff, bristled brush. And when you're happy with the dusting, you've got yourself a historically and movie accurate second Rangers Captain helmet. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe right here to Spurs and Bruce Scale Modeling for more history chats, tutorials, and more. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, see you on the beach.